In 2005, drummer and Indiana native Jeremy Spencer, along with Zoltan Bathory, forms the hard and heavy group known as Five Finger Death Punch. After 13 successful years with the band that includes gold and platinum records, as well as a New York Times celebrity best-selling book, Death Punch, surviving Five Finger Death Punch's metal mayhem, Jeremy quits the band amidst surgeries and physical breakdown from years of furious touring. In 2021, Jeremy is back and making new music with his band Psychosexual, the theatrical rock band driven by Jeremy's passion for the -the over-the-top rock and roll experience which he incorporates into his character Devil Daddy. In this conversation, we talk about his new band, the physical toll of touring, and a few surprising thoughts on how maturing changes your views of the rock scene. This is my exclusive interview with Jeremy Spencer. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy Spencer, a.k.a. Devil Daddy from Psychosexual, and you're checking out 99 WNRR. Hey everybody, welcome to the Launchpad Live 99 WNRR interviews and it's a pleasure to have the former founding member and drummer of Five Finger Death Punch and the current head devil of Psychosexual. Uh, Welcome to uh, Jeremy Spencer. How's it going, Jeremy? How's it going today? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for uh, taking a couple of minutes. Okay, so I'm watching this video, right? And this character pops up on the screen and I'm like, oh my God, it's like Coop, you know, the artist Coop, come to life. And it's the cover of Lords of Acid, Voodoo You, and all of this, the deepest, darkest parts of, you know, the human experience, you know, like come to life. This is insane stuff, man. Where did you come up with the idea of this? Well, I mean, when you're creating, it's kind of just like where you are at that particular time. So it's always changing. Um, Being able to play the character means less rules. So you can kind of experiment with more crazy stuff and and try different things that you may not be able to do if you were just a normal dude on stage looking normal. Yeah. So I kind of just paint a fantasy any way I want, like I'm feeling at the time. It's basically like uh, losing yourself in a horror movie for a couple hours or some kind of fantasy thing. You know, it's uh, you can there's endless possibilities, but it's just kind of developed a life of its own really it just started with me writing some songs and i'm like well what the hell is this guy supposed to look like you know (laughs) and i'm like wait there's never i've never seen a devil front man but you know while while you know there's a dark side to all of it you know i found that there is like a satirical lighter side to the character as well well the dark imagery is always fascinated me but like the this particular character is more of a fun devil. He just wants everyone to ha- have fun, you know, and fuck each other. <laughs> and, and, and you know, those the videos have this over the top, you know, like our rock heroes used to do, you know, the kisses, the Alice Coopers of the world, where it was larger than life. And, you know, we have our rock and roll heroes and the mystique and everything is, should I say, you know, uh, that is a huge influence in creating this character and creating this idea because i mean it's rock and roll and it has to be big it has to have a big show yeah exactly i mean growing up seeing kiss to me there was nothing else everything else was down here when kiss that they just set the bar for what a show should be like so i want to go to a show and be wowed by the experience and like did you see them or alice cooper even when he just bring out a snake I thought that was something incredible that you, that's not typical to see somebody with a snake around, wrapped around them performing. I thought that that's, it was incredible as a kid. So it's just, it's just, we've seen so much of it and then it went away with the nineties and then we went into some weird other period, you know, but I, yeah. I always think that the show is just as important, you know, as the music. It's got to be stimulating and the whole package, like you want to pick up the record cover and stare at the characters on it and get lost in it and and, and the whole fantasy. It's almost like a comic book world. Right. Because it's a place that, you know, you can lose yourself, which is what we used to do. We 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 got lost in in the music. We got lost in the storyline, which brings me to the subject of the bands from, you know, the 90s on up where, you know, everybody it was the youthful angst of the time. And, you know, those bands over time, you know, got older and got more popular and the angst, you know, 
How much more angst can you have and how long can that sustain itself without, you know, one day having it become a mockery of itself by being pretentious in its own nature? Because how can you complain when things are going well, so to speak? Yeah. Than anything, sure. than any fake edge you could put out there. Well, even in the in the you know my former band, it it became tough to keep being the same thing. You know, it's like we've talked about those particular things a lot. We've sounded like this particular way a lot. Um, so to keep branching out and stretch out, it was it was a little tough because you want to do something that was fresh for you, but, and, but you don't want to alienate the fan base because they, that's what they expect. Right. Um, it's like, I Hey, we're they, pissed off, but can we be more pissed off? You know? Yeah. I mean, and we really weren't that pissed off at things were going really well when you're headlining in arenas and you're finally um, fortunate enough to make more money than you ever have in your life at that point. There's, I mean, there's different set of problems, but we weren't, it wasn't like the new were really angry and fucking on fire out of the gate band. You know, it kind of changed somewhere down the line, at least for me. Well, I mean, I think it has to. I mean, that, that's just a normal progression. I mean, when you're coming out of the gate, you know, pissing vinegar and on fire, it's a different set of priorities. Yeah, I noticed that. I mean, it turned into kids in the front row you know little kids and oh no kiss <laughs> it was like the dynasty era where i loved it as a kid yeah but the older fans were like what the fuck is this you know it wasn't the same for them um it wasn't their kiss anymore yeah it wasn't your black leather and your hundred thousand years and strutter and deuce yeah yeah and you know i it's to me it just uh it wasn't as stimulating anymore and then throw in back problems and touring for so long and just being beaten up, you know, you're like, okay, I got to step off this train, man. <laughs> you know what? So. You know, I was actually talking to somebody recently about that. We were having the conversation about the physical toll that it takes for artists to be out on the road touring for as long as you, you have. And as furiously as you have, I, I can only imagine doing that set list Two hours, five times a week. It had to have absolutely break, taken a toll on your body. Yeah. And it's not just straight ahead, simple rock and roll. You know, there was a lot of double yeah. bass and a lot of head flipping. And just uh, it starts to break your body down. And yeah. I wasn't I wasn't able to perform at a level anymore that was acceptable to me or fun it's like my i could do it here but it's not working in my body kind of like similar to an athlete where it's time they're like fuck i used to be able to fucking dunk that ball like crazy and now it's not the same or they just lose their they lose it and your body starts yeah. not performing so i was like all right this is not fun I'm, I'm in pain and you know we've done it on every possible level you can do it yeah it's good and now i want to try something else something and else after I recover and get back surgery, <laughs> I did. And it's a good thing that you were able to heal from that. And before we were talking about that, uh, we were, you know, obviously talking about, you know, the big show and, you know, how even some of the classic eighties bands like Iron Maiden and, you know, still bring, you know, a huge show and those tickets sell out in 45, literally 45 minutes. And it's an impossible ticket to get, but the need for the over the top rock and roll experience. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's exactly what, you know, I'm going for and what we're going for. It's, it has to have some lightheartedness, like um, to just be brutal the whole time that to me, loses dynamics it's cool for right out of the gate but then after 10 minutes i'm like fuck i need some dynamics <laughs> you know i need to go like this a little bit rather than the whole time so the, you'll hear all kinds of different styles you know on our records which we've been working our ass off like we're on album five and nobody's even heard this first one so <laughs> you know it's uh 
I can't wait to get going, man. And in listening to some of the tracks, that's what I heard. I heard uh, like a little bit of ni- old Nine Inch Nails, uh, definitely some typo. Yeah. And the cool thing about that is that it has that, you know, that grinding, that dirty feel at the same time, you know, songs you could have sex to. Uh, reminiscent of... Um, What's that famous Jane's Addiction song? Oh, Three Days. Yeah. Now, I do my research before an interview, and I look at a ton of other interviews. What do you think of all these super serious music aficionados who have so much to say about the psychosexual? Yeah, I think uh, (coughs) the shock of it at first may be so different because I was that guy from Death Punch, and that's what they've come to expect. And it was like, this has nothing to do with that. (laughs) And I'm really happy that you like it and that you like Death Punch. And, you know, I was a part of it, and and it has allowed me a great life. Um, Thanks for being a fan. But I'm on this new journey now, and if you'd like to come along, cool. If you don't get it, that's cool. But you need to – it's something that people need to have an open mind with. It's – it. It does have some tongue in cheek. There's a, a fun feel to it, but there's also stuff that ha- they haven't heard yet. That's fucking brutal. And they'll get to hear that too. And they'll go, yeah, that's the fucking shit. You know, that's the tough shit that we liked, you know? Um, but there's also some really mellow stuff, sensitive that they'll be like, well, I don't know if I like that, but then there'll probably be a girl that goes, well, I like that. So there's something for everyone. Um, yeah. The thing is to not take it too fucking serious. I'm not trying to be, a prog band or some brilliant uh, solve a calculus problem with the music band. You know, that's just not what I'm going for. I mean, I hate to keep on bringing up kiss, but, but it's the truth. I mean, the, the lyrics that you're writing are, you know, straight to the point, right in your face. I mean, we're not talking Neil Peart here, you know, but if they have impact and they have effect, I mean, I just listened to the lyrics. I mean, dri- <laughs> tripping from the chin. I mean, it just, you don't need a thesaurus to write some hard shit, you know? And yeah, yeah. I mean, it is hardcore because it's so blatantly obvious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, that was just the fun of it. It's like, it's, it's so offensive, but it's not, you know, it was, that yeah. was, it was kind of a, it's just all meant to be tongue in cheek. Um, not everything's going to be like that. I mean, it's not, every song's not sex. It's, it's not, it's um, that particular song was yeah very sexually driven and the video was sexually driven and just, it was meant to be fun, but I think it freaked a lot of people out and that's okay. I mean, I'm good. You were freaked out. So, yeah. and, and you're, next. <laughs> and you're talking about it. Exactly. And you're talking about it, which is and really... They're, they're getting the hate juice. They get to fucking, fuck this guy, he sucked. But in there, so everyone gets out of it what they want, right? Oh, they do. They do. And I'm like, the venom that I've seen spewed about the, this project, I just tell these guys, you know, dude, just have a shot of scotch and just shut up. That's okay. I get it, man. Um, You know, everyone needs to feel what they feel and get out of it what they need to get out of it. That's the cool thing about music. If it's some hate juice that they get from it, great. If they actually enjoy it, that's great too. I make it for, because I like it. Yeah. So that's what it has to be. First and foremost, if if, if I'm not into it, I don't do it, you know? And if, as long as I am, I keep doing it, but there's going to be lots of changes. I mean, it's not all one thing. It's that's, that's boring to me. So there'll be all kinds of stuff. And and there probably will be something that's those dudes that go, this is the worst shit I've ever heard in my life. will go, fuck man. I fucking hate those guys, but that was song's pretty cool. And that's, you know, like that, I think that'll happen. And that's a great point. I mean, how many people were out there singing? I was made for loving you. All right. So you can hate it as much as you want, but you're out there singing the song for sure, man. And as a kid to be, I didn't know that that was, I, I loved it. It was hooky. And I thought, oh, fuck, this rules. And they were painted. And I thought this was the coolest shit ever. And then I went and discovered older kiss. Uh, but to me, that's what brought me in. You know, I mean, it's yeah. commercial. It's, it's, it was fucking smart. They did. That was smart. Then thank God creatures came out. Cause they finally got back to some heavy shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hard friggin' album too. I think if they could have, gone with creatures right after dynasty they would have been okay much better off and i mean but whatever everyone's got to try their thing and experiment with what they feel is right and they did it and they survived holy i mean shit they survived the elder man 
<laughs> if you can survive an elder, you've got a damn good career. That's like, <laughs> you know, since we're talking about the boys at Kiss, you know, obviously when they put on the makeup and, you know, they became a persona, uh, do you actually transform into, you know, Devil Daddy in a way when you, when you put on the gear? I mean, in other words, like how much uh, are you Devil Daddy and how much of Devil Daddy is you? Yeah, because it's you get to play. It's kind of like acting almost. But um, it I mean, it's it's me, but I, I'm also acting a character. It, it's you kind of flip the switch because you're sitting in the chair getting all this shit put on you for so long that when you're finally done, you're ready to fucking explode and go because you've just been sitting there for so long. But yeah, you turn into the character somewhat and you know, you can do anything you want when you're dressed in that character. It's like, there's no, the rules are different almost. (laughs) How long do they sit you in that damn makeup chair? Man, when we first started experimenting with the makeup, when we didn't know what we were doing, the first time it took like four hours. And I'm like, this is not going to work. So now we have it down to about an hour, a little over an hour. And then that's putting it on and then probably 30 minutes taking it off. Was there so ever- it's, it's enough work. It's it's enough. I know. It looks like it. I'm like, holy crap. This guy's in makeup, makeup half the freaking day. <laughs> it sucks. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's prosthetic and airbrush both. So it's, uh, it's a lot of work. But for whatever reason, I chose to make it hard on myself. But, you know, the end result is something interesting to look at. <laughs> so you have the videos out and, and the tracks playing. What's uh, coming up down the line for Psychosexual? Yeah, the, the album's going to come out in May. I think the tentative date is the 14th of May. We'll announce it soon. But the single, Devil From Hell, um, comes out March 25th. And then the 29th of March, it goes to radio. So that'll be the first radio single. And then the album's in May. When that's released, would you like to come back? I'd love to have you on for the uh, for the May issue. Always. Yeah, anytime. I would love it. All right. I'll let Amy know and we'll, and we'll hook it up. Cool. All right, It'd be man. cool one time if I can be in character and I come on. Can I tell you this? I actually considered it and thought that you actually might be in character with a bunch of girls around you. I really did think that that might happen to start the interview off <laughs> and actually carry and actually do the character. I really, for a minute, I'm sitting there grabbing my coffee. I'm going, I wonder if he's going to come on as the cat, as, as, as the man. I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll tell I you what. Gave it some thought. I'll tell you what, I if if I do that, I'm going to schedule 10 Zooms in one day so I can do <laughs> Wow, dude, that's <laughs> a, a hell of a fucking deal to get into that ghetto. Dude, that's a great idea, though, man. Yeah. Having like, you know, almost, almost like the layer and shit and, you know, something like that. And like, like all, the, all these people can zoom in on like a big, you know, a press thing. And then people you can, you know, do the character to hold on to. That would be pretty badass. Yeah. I'd enjoy the heck out of that. Maybe I'll just do that then. <laughs> hey, man, I've had an absolute great time, man. It's a good talking to you. Thanks for uh, coming aboard for a few. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate your time. No problem. Hey, man, we'll talk in May. I'll see you then. Stay safe. Thank you. You too. All right. Peace. Peace. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy Spencer, a.k.a. Devil Daddy from Psychosexual, and you're checking out 99 WNRR. <laughs>